attention. Welcome to the Different Spectrums podcast. We dive into the wild world of mental health discussions. Get ready for profound talks, a sprinkle of humor and sarcasm, and a touch of colorful language. Just a quick heads up, our show reflects our individual opinions, which may not align with the standpoint of the podcast, our featured guests, or any related corporate entities. Our mission? To illuminate through laughter and satire, because everyone needs a good chuckle. Chill out and don't stress over the small stuff. Legal troubles? No thank you. Cancel culture? Please spare us. We'd rather keep this space lawsuit free. So buckle up, have a good time, and join us as we navigate the vibrant realm of mental health on the Different Spectrums podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. By using our link, you can get 10% off your first month of therapy. So Nas, as a therapist on BetterHelp, what has your experience been like? I've been doing it since January of 2021, and it's been really fun and exciting. I've been able to reach clients all over the United States and the world. I've had good relationships. I've had folks that I've had for a couple months and a good handful where I've had for almost two years now. Uh, so it's magnificent. I've enjoyed my time and my clients. I love them. Awesome. You can do it all from your phone or computer via phone call, video chat, or messaging, however you feel the most comfortable. Let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can support you all from the comfort of your own home. Visit BetterHelp.com slash DSP or choose Different Spectrums Podcast during sign up and enjoy a special discount on your first month. Hey everybody, we back again. We back, we're live. Like how enthusiastic you are when you do that anymore. Uh, I'm Spencer. Of course, we have our licensed clinical therapist, Nas. Dr. Nas, folks. What's happening? That was gross. Anyways, remember, don't take us too seriously. Or do. It's completely up to you. There we go. Also, don't forget to run up those likes for us. We'd really appreciate it. Let's see if it does it. No. Hey. All right. What was that? What was the end of the Waynes Brothers like? There intro? I go. Oh, there it is. What was the end? Here and I we're come, best Michael. friends. We're happy and oh, we're yeah. colored and we're something. That's a Waynes Brothers show. Yeah. We're happy and we're singing and we're colored. Dun, dun, dun. Give me a high five. Then they beat the shit out of the director. All right. Anyways, um, please go check out one of our great sponsors. Oh, no. We have fidget toy. Oh no. It just sounds oh, weird. No. Oh no. Oh no. You're just like, oh no. Oh no. I probably should have had this prepared. <laughs> but I didn't. And I'm looking through my backpack right now. Backpack. While I'm backpack. streaming. Give me a second. What's he gonna One pull second. out, folks? It's not gonna be good. It's a black thing. Um Jesus. It is. <laughs> it's his oh it no. Is. It's his Ono Autism oh, Roller. Ono Roller. Yeah. Autism. I don't think they market it as Autism Roller. Yeah, no, it gives you autism. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, go check out Ono Rollers. You can get 10% off yours. Um, I have the aluminum one, and right now it's actually pretty cold in my hand. And so it can soothe you. It can soothe you. It's cold, yeah. cold in your hand, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> getting all the funnies out the way in the intro so yeah. that then we can get serious all right so yeah go check out oh no go look at the link in the description you can get 10 percent off your order and uh yeah so go do it oh no all right so as you can tell by the poster on my left uh we are be going to break down the movie Malcolm X. Yes. Yes. Power to the people. Um, the great film uh, that came out in 1992, directed by Spike Lee, and of course, lead actor, the great Denzel Washington. Um, 
the movie that was snubbed for uh, best best picture and best actor. Just saying, Al Pacino, Scent of a Woman. Has anybody actually seen Scent of a Woman that's watching this show? I don't think so. No, I've never liked a Scent no. of a Woman ever. Right. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I love how for... We shoot this. You're like, I'm being serious. No funny shit. We about to do this. It's Malcolm. And then you're like, I don't like We man. haven't gotten to the Malcolm yet. We was talking about Scent of a Woman. Anyway. I don't need it. Uh, I like Beth or what's it called? Ah, oh, I fucked okay. it up. <laughs> I like Axe Body Spray on my partner. <laughs> body Does anybody buy Axe anymore? <laughs> People I date. <laughs> Guys wear boxers oh. with dick holes in them. Sorry. <laughs> anyways, <laughs> glory hole. <laughs> anyways, some things that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the dictionary. Uh, I'm talking about white and black. <laughs> That's right. We're talking about the dictionary. <laughs> you stupid motherfuckers scary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know you we're going, we going through every word this is a 10 hour podcast every word <laughs> yeah um we're going to be going through uh malcolm's childhood talking about that um and all the things that he had to go through um things that were said of, like not just him but a lot of black afro americans had to go through um also going to be talking about how uh malcolm went to mecca and his experiences there and um yeah and what he had to go through um as well as assassination and the ending scene with nelson mandela so we're gonna be hitting a lot of tough but powerful topics today so uh, naz anything before we get into the show uh before i get to talking too much i have no idea on what we're going to be able to include uh, visually and audio, audio in the YouTube or in the Apple Spotify podcast. Yes. So we're just going to, you know, we, we got a bunch of scenes. Uh, you know, go see the movie if you want to. We're going to talk directly about certain scenes that I use in therapy. I hope that I can get these through YouTube uh, for you. Yeah, I guess you're going to find out in about three minutes. Uh, if we Thanks a to, lot, Warner Bros. Yeah, Warner Brothers, HBO, CBS, Turner. They usually block Assholes. like everything, so it's just really hard for me to get any of that material through to you all. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna do my best to chop and edit this. Uh, and it's probably gonna be kind of Frankenstein-y, is what it is. Yeah, that's what I, what I, that's what I call my videos when there's a lot of editing. Frankenstein, yeah, it's interesting. Sorry. Um, trigger warning for a lot of racial stuff. The N word will be dropped in it. Hopefully, don't we get in trouble for that? Um, I think we'll be fine. But I mean, who, who fucking knows? Uh, I'm talk. I'm not talking about from people. I'm talking about maybe they'll block it because the N word. I doubt it. You're like uh, they said it in the movie, not yeah. us. I don't know. Um, a lot of powerful stuff. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to keep in the ending scene and Nelson Mandela. Uh, but we're gonna have some fun talking about dissociations, uh, lots of racial issues, uh, and just the poison that it is. So mm -hmm. let's get into this. Let's kind of see what happens. I didn't no notes. We're just going to kind of Spencer will kind of introduce like not a description of the scene, but it just kind of be like, Hey, this is what we did. And then we're going to kind of have like a discussion about it and just kind of talk and wherever it goes today, whatever goes. So yeah, uh, much yeah. love everyone. Let's get into it. Let's brace taking good faith that we are not full experts on Malcolm X on racial issues, societal issues. We're just doing the best that we can to bring you wonderful clips that I use in therapy. There you go. All right. Whoop, whoop. Let's do it. Whoop, whoop. He taught you you were a black heathen and you believed him. He taught you to worship a blonde, blue-eyed Jesus with white skin and you believed him. He taught you that black was a curse and you believed that. Did you ever look up the word black in a dictionary? For what? Did you ever study anything that wasn't part of some con? What the hell for, man? Come with me. Black, destitute of light, devoid of color. 
enveloped in darkness, hence utterly dismal or gloomy, as the future looked black. Pretty good with them words, ain't you? Soiled with dirt, foul, sullen, hostile, forbidding, as a black day. Foully or outrageously wicked, as black cruelty, indicating disgrace, dishonor, or culpability. And there's others, black male, black ball, black guard. Yeah, well, there's some more, right? Let's look up white. Here. Read. White. Of the color of pure snow. Uh, reflecting all the rays of the spectrum. The opposite of black. Uh, free from spot or blemish. Innocent. Pure. Huh. Ain't this something? Without evil intent, harmless, honest, square dealing, and honorable. Wait a minute, but this, this, this was written by white folks though, right? I mean, this white, white folks book? It sure ain't no black man's book. So what we reading this one for? Because the truth is lying there. If you read behind the words, you got to take everything the white man says and use it against him. Yeah? All right, wait, wait. I mean, you know, there's a whole lot of words in here. Here, let's start at the beginning. We'll look them up, write them down, and find out what they mean. Here, page one. The first word, aardvark. Aardvark, earth pig. African ant eating mammal. Abacus. Chinese calculating instrument. Uh, Abaddon. The place of the lost in Sheol. The bottomless pit. If you take one step toward Allah, he will. Now, the important thing is to be realistic. We all like you here, you know that. But you're a nigger and a lawyer. Is no realistic goal for a nigger. But why not to Ostrowski? I guess the best grades in class. I got voted class president. I want to be a lawyer. Now, I want you to think about something that you can be. You're good with your hands. Making things. People would give you work. I would myself. Why don't you become a carpenter? That's a good profession for a color. Wasn't your pa a carpenter? Jesus was a carpenter. If people like you as a person. You're doing real well. Remember what we said. Nothing succeeds like success. Let me hear it. Nothing succeeds like success. Now you may be shocked by these words, but I have eaten from the same plate, drunk from the same glass, and prayed to the same God with fellow Muslims whose eyes were blue, whose hair was blonde, and whose skin was the whitest of white. And we were all brothers, true. People of all colors and races believing in one God, in one humanity. Each hour here in this sacred land enables me to have a greater spiritual insight into what is happening in America. The American Negro can never be blamed for his racial animosities. He's only reacting to 400 years of oppression and discrimination. But as racism leads America up the suicidal path, I do believe that the younger generation will see the handwriting on the wall and many of them will want to turn to the spiritual path of the truth. The only way left in this world to ward off the disaster that racism must surely lead to. Once before in prison, the truth came and blinded me. Well, it has happened again. In the past, I've made sweeping indictments of all white people. And these generalizations have caused injuries to some white folks who did, who not, did not deserve, deserve. Them. Because of the spiritual rebirth which I was blessed to undergo as a result, of my pilgrimage to the holy city of Mecca. I no longer subscribe to sweeping indictments of one race. I intend 
to be very careful not to and sentence very anyone. careful not to sentence anyone who has not, not been proven guilty. guilty. I am not a racist. I am not a racist. To any of the and I do not subscribe to any of the tenets of racism. In all honesty and, in all honesty and sincerity, it, it can, can be stated, stated that I wish that nothing, I wish but, nothing freedom, but freedom, justice, justice and equality. And equality. Life liberty and the pursuit of happiness for all people now my first concern of course is with the group to which i belong for we more than any others are deprived of our inalienable rights but i believe the true practice of islam can remove the cancer of racism from the hearts and the souls of all americans and if i can die having brought any light having exposed any meaningful truth that will help destroy this disease then all the credit is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, and only the mistakes have been mine. Please give all my love to the children. I love you dearly. Sincerely, El Haj Malik El Shabazz, Malcolm X. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Ad-Din Iyyaka Na'budu wa Iyyaka Nasta'in Ihadna Sirata Mustaqim Sirata Al-Lazina An'amta Alayhim Khair Al-Makhdubi Alayhim Waladdallim Assassination of Malcolm X was an unfortunate tragedy, and it reveals that there are still uh, numerous uh, people in our nation who have degenerated to the point of expressing dissent through murder, and uh, we haven't learned to disagree without being violently disagreeable. Here, at this final hour, in this quiet place, Harlem has come to bid farewell to one of its brightest hopes. Extinguished now and gone from us forever. It is not in the memory of man that this beleaguered, unfortunate, but nonetheless proud community has found a braver, more gallant young champion than this Afro-American who lies before us unconquered still. I say the word again as he would want me to, Afro-American. Afro-American Malcolm. Malcolm had stopped being Negro years ago. It had become too small, too puny, too weak a word for him. Malcolm was bigger than that. Malcolm had become an Afro-American, and he wanted so desperately that we, that all his people, would become Afro-Americans too. There are those who still consider it their duty, as friends of the Negro people, to tell us to revile him, to flee, even from the presence of his memory, to save ourselves by writing him out of the history of our turbulent times. And we will smile. They will say that he is of hate, 
a fanatic, a racist, who can only bring evil to the cause for which you struggle. And we will answer and say unto them, did you ever talk to Brother Malcolm? Did you ever touch him or have him smile at you? Did you ever really listen to him? You haven't done the right thing. Was he ever himself associated with violence or any public disturbance? For if you did, you would know him. And if you knew him, you would know why we must honor him. Malcolm was our manhood, our living black manhood. This was his meaning to his people, and in honoring him, we honor the best in ourselves. However much we may have differed with him, or with each other about him and his value as a man, let his going from us serve only to bring us together now. Consigning these mortal remains to earth, the common mother of all, Secure in the knowledge that what we place in the ground is no more now a man, but a seed, which after the winter of our discontent will come forth again to meet us, and we shall know him then for what he was and is, a prince, our own black shining prince, who didn't hesitate to die because he loved us so. And so today, May 19th, we celebrate Malcolm X's birthday because he was a great, great Afro-American. And Malcolm X is you, all of you. And you are Malcolm X. I'm Malcolm X! I'm Malcolm X! I'm Malcolm X! I'm Malcolm X! As Brother Malcolm said, we declare our right on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be given the rights of a human being to be respected as a human being in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intended to bring into existence. By any means necessary. Hey everyone, I'm here to talk about our new collaborator, Toink Toys. They have a wide selection of, you guessed it, toys and other great collectibles. They have products from Marvel, Star Wars, Harry Potter, and everything pop culture. You could say they put the toy in Toink. So go check them out at toink.com and use our code Different Spectrums Podcast to get 10% off your entire order today. All right, we are back again. We're back, folks, and we're live. This is live as racism today. Uh, real talk. Shit's fucked up. Yeah. That's serious. We're live. All right, there yeah. you go. Um, yeah, so like we said in the beginning, this is Malcolm X biopic by Spike Lee uh, with tons of great actors in it, but Denzel, Denzel is the is the main guy mr malcolm um brother malcolm um so obviously um in the first scene that we're going to be talking about um this is the prison scene so in uh malcolm's childhood you know his father was presumably murdered um they said he was drunk or whatever and just fell asleep on the tracks and was killed but no he was probably murdered um by like the local clan and um and so after that his mom goes into um literally just loses her mind and she's slowly losing it and so um malcolm he now grows up in these like white schools um i think it was like a wasn't it like a 
like a foster home yep, or something like went that. Into foster care. Yeah, he went to foster care. Um, and of course, white, as we've seen before. We've talked about this in one of our Atlanta episodes, um, like with foster care and everything yep. like that. Um, going to these white families, then they just don't get who you are. Um, he was outcast. And, um, and then he goes and now he's in like, uh, he goes to crime and things like that because, you know. Yeah, goes to hustling and all that because he's told that he is nothing more than his skin color. Yep. Yes. And so then he goes to prison. And this is where he starts to go into the religion of uh, Islam. And um, they start teaching him all these different things. And so uh, one of the things that um, he is taught is to read the dictionary and how... um, is written by a white man and it has all these different words have different connotations um black is seen as ugly and terrible and then white is pure and amazing and yeah so innocent innocent yes yes um and then obviously this is where we are kind of at with society it's just seeing that ah yes the color black is seen as this terrible thing and then white is so amazing ah pure it's the best um it's very much speaking to just society in this whole especially at that time um we're speaking about it this time too but i think it really shows that character back then as well um and so yeah i mean for you naz you can speak personally professionally um when we talk about these descriptions, especially in the dictionary and what we're taught at a young age, um, how do those things kind of affect us when we're older? Crazy thing is you don't even know it affects you. It just mm-hmm. does. It oozes through yeah. your society. You know, you keep being shown all these images and these things and these contexts and these words. And right, the, the 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 darkness, the devil's, everything's black. It's, it's a pit. It's an abyss. It's it's overwhelming and succumbing to to these things, right? Uh, even Star Wars, fucking darkness and the dark side. Everything's always referred to as evil and dark, mm-hmm. void of light. Um, and so you get these subtle things, these contextual things these words and different nomenclatures that we talk about. And it's just, it's intense and it, and it oozes through you. It can pervert your mind into thinking that, Oh, you're right. So this black thing is like, not good. When you wear a dark black hoodie, people are going to be more intimidated by you. It just looks kind of masculine, aggressive, maybe a little unknown. Right. But if you're wearing like a white one, it's bright. Uh, you know, it's vivacious. It's, 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 it's pure. It's clean. It's clean. It's fresh. Um, the one that said innocent, what did it say? Uh, it said pure. It said avoid of evil. And I was like, Jesus Christ, man. So he, he teaches them these things. Uh, and he talks about it obviously in the book and the book is one of the number one. It's in the top, every consensus that you look at for like historical books, uh, nonfiction books, this is going to be number five, number three, number two, and almost everything average number three in almost every single ranking for best books of like all time of all history. Um, wonderful book, wonderful movie, uh, but it's intense. And so you look at this and I remember Muhammad Ali in a press conference too talks about it. This is how they look at us. This is what black means. This is what white means. And why is that? And so you devalue yourself over time. You end up becoming like self-hating. You know, people keep telling you that you're this. You're like, holy shit, maybe I am this. Maybe I'm worthless. Maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I'm ignorant. Maybe, Maybe I'm a thug. Maybe I'm a monster. Maybe I'm a mutant. That's why we did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles things. Someone commented, you know, you can't correlate or you can't compare sexuality and like race. No, you can't. You can, because folks of color are looked at as horrific mutants. Sexuality do the same. We do the same thing with economics. We do it with anything 
This isn't like white and rich. Mm-hmm. This isn't thin. Um, and so these teachings are going to be hard for some people to listen to. But I mean, th- internalize it yourself if you're a white bodied individual. You know, Spencer's also, you know, white passing. I'm pretty dark skinned during the summer, but also I get really pale in the winter. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you know how sickening it is for me that I have to check off and I don't because I refuse to. But under race, Arabs, Arab isn't a race, it's an ethnicity. So we fall under the white race. So I am supposed to click white in every like form I fill out. But yet I get none of the privilege of whiteness. Mm-hmm. And it's fucked up. And so I always check Hispanic, Latino. But that's also not what I fully identify as because I also want to be respectful of the Arab side. It's just a weird place to be. Yeah, You're always othered. Even all the Muslims that he met there and all the Arabs that he met there, technically they would all be right, white. But they were all dark as shit. (laughs) Um, But they're Arab. It's, It's just so interesting. And you think about Arabs in Africa, that can get into a whole nother story. But, you know, is Egypt and then Morocco and all these different things. It's a magnificent thing and confusing thing, this race thing that we created just to segregate black folks. It's always about segregating black folks. The the structure of whiteness, some folks will just like say white supremacy, but they just love to say that because it's so intense. But whiteness, it kills everyone and everything. It even destroys white folks. And they don't even know it. It's like in that Atlanta movie too. They don't even know it that it's destroying them and eating them. So, right, this dictionary scene to me means a lot. To me, it makes me very anxious and angry. It makes me also very sad. To know these are the messages that we hear. And I'm not a not, not black person. Spence is biracial. Um, but this is how people look at us. I told a client the other day, we we're talking about race. I said, they look at you, boy, like, you know, you Mexican, you use an N word. I didn't say, I didn't say the actual word. I said, they look at us and they think that we're that. Hmm. That's it. Because we demonize and hate everything that isn't white. I said, don't matter how much money you got. Me and Spence just talked about it. And LeBron, tons of money. They spray paint the N word on his house. Spence was, uh, I'll let you get into it. Actually, I'm not going to speak for you. Um, So I don't want to disrespect you in the moment. But, you know, you just color is what divides us and creates all this horrific things. It's crazy. But it's awesome to see it in the dictionary. So I want some folks to go look it up in the dictionary. I'm sure it's rewritten now uh, a little right. bit. But when you think about it, you know, a lot of these books are written by white dudes. Mm-hmm. Sorry to say it, but a lot of your religious texts also written by white dudes. I wonder if there's any funny business in that. I just sent Spence of. Uh, real today about some like uh, racial history and how the black Bible that they were given was devoid of hundreds of pages, almost a thousand pages. Uh, Because if they would have kept in all the pages in the new Testament, old Testament, then there would have been an uprising because there's a lot of stuff talking about, you know, a lot of different things, a lot of different things. And so it's just interesting on how we devalue things. Yeah based on color and how, and you know, even if we look at our fucking constitution, uh, and we were like, what was it? Blacks are one third human or something like that. Or two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. Yep. So you get two thirds of vote. And it's just like, what, uh, you know, serious topics today. (laughs) It's interesting when clients come to my office, I talked about it in the last pod that we just did. Uh, I, I lost train of thought. What was the last pod we just did? The one we just did a second ago. Uh, we actually last goal. just did. Yep. Let next. Goal. Um, yeah. Next goal wins. Yep. Next goal wins. Uh, and we talked about, you know, some of the clients that I work with uh, and a lot of black and brown bodies. And it's just tough to see the things that they deal with and the, and the pain that they hold and the ancestral pain that they hold and how we're so far back in line when it comes to mental health, physical health, education, you know, therapy, uh, medicine, heart issues, drug and addiction issues. It's just, you're so far behind. Even in the movie Blackman that we talked about, Blank Man, sorry. Uh, 
you know, you see them in the house and in the hood and shit and it's crack everywhere. It's like, how do you succeed in that? Yeah. You know, I got a client Spence that I remember working with and then, and then I'm going to let you talk and then we're going to get into some other scenes. Uh, and maybe some of my clients be saying some shit boy and they'd be like, you know what? You know, good people just don't work hard. You know, I worked hard. I'm like, oh man, I want to cuss your ass out so bad right now. Like your white ass, family rich as hell, all science, bachelor's degrees, engineers and shit, all making big money. But 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 you worked as hard as other people. You worked as hard as me coming out of the shit I came out, probably being a convict and shit, running away from home. But 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 we need to work harder. It ain't about working hard, homie. It's that you give up so fucking quick. Because the next thing we talk about, they say that this is who you are, the N-word. You ain't shit, never going to be shit. So you quit. Because I'm going to go do these other things uh, because you already told me I'm a piece of shit to the system. And just when clients say that shit to my face, I'm like, it's not my job to educate them. And therapy needs to be based on them. They're good people. But the shit that they say, and I've had some, some arguments and dialogues with some clients because I'm like, all right, uh, all right, all right. You know what? I'm actually not that nice. Fuck you. Uh, you know, I ain't putting up with your bullshit. Fuck you. And I hope your privileged ass has a panic attack and crashes. Jesus. Hey, man, they be saying some shit, man. They be saying some horrific, horrific shit. Uh, but I'm going to pause so, on that. Go ahead, I have a question for that, actually, for you on that. I understand you're in, in a position where, you know, they feel comfortable enough to talk to you yep. about stuff and about that kind of stuff. Um, do you also kind of see it as like, uh, in a way disrespectful because they don't see you as that type, that, that race at all. You want to, you want the good ones. Comfortable. You want the, yeah, good like ones. One of the good ones. Do you see that anyway? Yeah, bro. They or do think you that, think it's just because you made a comfortable environment for them? Oh, no, I made a comfortable environment. Everything's good. They can talk to me about anything, my clients. They can talk to me right. about super personal body-like functions. They can talk to me about yeah. all religion. But once they say that word, like, those people need to work harder, you're just like, but those are my people. Like, what, what are you talking about? Perfect. Uh, it becomes very interesting, the dialogues. I'm like what? Uh, so I ask questions, never combat them. I just ask, well, "What makes you think like that? Right. Where, where'd you come up with that? Um, right. What are your lived experiences versus theirs? Have you talked to other people that they come from those situations? Well, oh, I know, but but how do you know? Is it from the news? Is it from like literature? Literature? Uh, well, you know, you got some stats. Well, I got some stats and statistics too, because my autistic ass keeps keeps record. I keep receipts. Um. And so I think a lot of people think that I'm educated that of course, like you worked really hard and all this and that. And like, and I acknowledged all my privileges, mm -hmm. all of it. Cause right now I'm extremely fucking privileged. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm like, you can't make these sweeping comments without knowing the context of what people have to go through. Imagine the movie moonlight that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Imagine growing up in that with a mom that's like an addict and then beating him and saying horrific things to him and call and calling him, you know, homophobic, horrific words. Yeah. There's no way a kid like that makes it. There's no way. Homicidality, suicidality. There's no way. Their mind drops out. We know statistically that brown and black bodies mentally are dropping out of education at fourth and fifth grade. We know that. We have the data. Even when you work things out to get economic status at the same. We're not talking about just poor brown kids and like rich white kids. We're talking about even the poor white kids. They're still excelling and going through the grades as normal. Hmm. So what's that about? Well, that's about representation. Uh, so I have to eat a few stray punches from some clients to know that my real work is with these other clients. Right. The, the real work, Spence. The, self, the yeah. gratifying clients. The clients that are on my mind right now that I'm going through the trenches with with suicidality that are fucking awesome. And I cry afterwards because I'm getting them to like still breathe. And people will be like, you know, that's, that's, you know, it's racist that you don't care so much about your white clients or like maybe Asian clients. Uh, 
I'm like, yeah, I mean, you can call it whatever it is, but all of us have our preferences and mine are my based on my identities. Right. People get a healing from people that look like me. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Like our wonderful therapist that came on Dr. Lakeith. It's an all black mm -hmm. business, all black staff working with mostly 90% black clients. And it's like magnificent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, so people say some stuff to me and I do my best to compartmentalize it and like take it in stride. But man, I'm straight as hurt, kid. Yeah. You're straight. I don't get them often, but I get them, you know. And I, sometimes I get them when they even talk shit just about women in general, too. Uh, mm -hmm. Or they'll talk about men and they'll talk about a lot of men's issues. But then that misogyny comes in. I just wait. I wait. I'm waiting in the weeds to attack. And then boom, I start coming with, you know, not my agenda. Like, hey, man, you know, you ain't going to be saying all this crazy shit in my office. Right. Uh, you know, there needs to be respect for humanity and human life, like Mandela says at the end. Yeah. <laughs> shit gets weird, man, when you start get, bringing in the real racial stuff. I had, a, I had an intern, wonderful person, one, one, wonderful person. They said, hey, man, I'm working with this black client. You know, and I just want to, you know, you got any tips, like things we can talk about, this or that, and right? And so I'm, I'm guiding them and working through it. It was wonderful. Open mind, like Spence just said in the last podcast at the end. Open mind, open heart. Be willing to learn, to experience, to be wrong. And then there's some that say like the dumbest shit, you know, say the dumbest shit. And then they call me to come take a client because you're like, oh, you know, you're a big brown dude, so you can take this other brown dude. You know, he'll be cool with you. I'm like, yeah, maybe some of the other staff should be competent in like how to speak with black and brown folks. Uh, maybe you shouldn't say stupid shit to clients to make them feel even more like homicidal or suicidal or like patronize them, patronize them. Like, wh why would you do this? This is, you know, how belittling this shit is that you just said. Students sits with me. Good. What's up, homie? And then we start talking. It's amazing how we treat black and brown men specifically, man. We treat them like they're fucking monsters. I've looked like a monster to so many people. I've seen so many people so disgusted with me. Uh, yeah. It's, it's tough. But yeah. it's a lot of people that love me too. So, Yeah. You can, always, you can always talk out the negatives, but then, you know, you also got a lot of positives too. So. Oh, yeah. There's, I don't make sweeping condemnations of any race, any gender, sexuality, ethnicity, religion. I don't do it. Right. I think I used to do it. I think a lot of people do it. A lot of my clients would say, all oh, white people are terrible. Oh, all black. I said, no, 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 no. I, I, I'll go with it because it's shit's like kind of funny and we're like, you know, jovial and shit like that. You know, we'll, and we'll jive yeah. with each other and vibe. But yeah. I'm like, nah. You know, my, yeah. a couple of my best friends is white dudes. Best friend, I'd take a stray for him and his kid. Mm -hmm. White dude. You know, I made a joke about Moses the other day because my friends like, I don't trust no white people, no white women. Mexican boy. Like, but all your friends is white. You know, I'll trust the white women though. I'm like, the fuck? That don't make no sense. You think they fucking. Yeah, I'm just like, it don't make no sense. Uh, <laughs> no, y'all ain't getting with black girls. Huh? Yeah, I, know. Like, I can feel it. Yeah. I can feel it. I can feel it. <laughs> well, he gay, so he, he ain't no girls anyway. Well, then never mind. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and I just say, hey man, chill out on that. Uh what you talking about? I said, chill out on that, man. Don't be, don't be saying that shit. You can say it, and I know you're joking, but like, as you start to believe it's crazy shit that you say. Start, right. you know, the more you say it, the more you believe it. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want to live in that world. Don't want to live in that world, even though I know I go to it, and you get paranoid about other races, sabotaging you, uh, yeah. diminishing you, saying things, backstabbing you. Spencer knows what I'm talking about right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think they're paranoid. I know, I know some, some shady stuff has happened in my lifetime. Um, yep. Spence, let's, uh, you got any comments? Yeah, I think, I think it seems really good. Um, really good lesson on educating yourself, um, as well as helping educate other people of color as well. Um, yes. I think that's a very important thing, but 
nowadays it's a little tougher because we're so diluted with so much shit just so much shit and it's like it's hard to actually get to the real stuff on what it means to you know be a person like always always give praise to those who really deserve it and who really gone through the trenches to make it i think sometimes we get a little backwards on especially like influencers and things like that just because you know they are a you know brown person or a person of color that we have to just support them no matter what even though they could be doing really dumb shit yeah, or say? really derogatory things yeah. to the race that we're actually trying to protect yeah that's my problem sometimes and i think we get a little bit lost in that we're just like oh okay well they're black so i have to really like them it's like how about you you know build up the people that are actually trying to educate the community they're actually trying to build something you know like let's stop trying to talk about like buying chains and cars and shit let's try to buy property own it and then you know give up big black businesses and make them go um to a whole other level let's try to do that instead yep. um but you know it is what it is malcolm talks uh, about it in the movie we need to buy our own stuff for our people by our people yeah you know you're going and spending money at this place or this conglomerate right and then but you got all these businesses right here in town and spencer mm -hmm. is doing his best right now to start collaborating with a lot of black and brown businesses in minnesota mm -hmm. and other places to maybe yep. have them talk maybe you know maybe we can push some of their stuff you know, because we're going to do it for our people. Uh, you know, autism, are you going to get that in there, right? Uh, so you're right. Uh, we make a lot of stupid people famous. Uh, mm -hmm. And in saying that, I also don't believe there's any monolith to what a black or brown person is supposed to be. Yeah. Right? Because there's a lot of folks that, you know, hey, more urban, more hood, more swag, more trap. Fuck it, that's you. Then you got a lot mm -hmm. of folks that are super nerdy and anime-ish, and, right? And then yeah. the video game-ish. And they feel ostracized because, yeah. like, I'm not, you know, I identify as, like, well, all my black friends or all my Mexican friends. They never fit in. That's what my mm -hmm. clients tell me. And I'm like, yeah, man, I get it. Trust me. Yeah. Me and Spence get it. Yeah. We understand. <laughs> we ain't never. We are outcasts everywhere. <laughs> we ain't never fit in shit. <laughs> no. Imagine <laughs> even what Colin's white ass. Uh, like he, he never fully fit in with white kids. All his friends are Mexican. Yeah. All his friends are Mexican. Okay. Like right. every single, you know, don't get twisted, but black folks loved him, <laughs> loved him. But he was, his day yeah. ones were all Mexican. Um, oh, didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. And cause he's just, you know, you know, uh, you know, him. some of the people on the pod will know him. They'll get to know him hopefully uh, more one day. He'll be our AJ Hawk. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's interesting how, you know, folks even like him found all this little neurodivergent folks. Oh, it turns out I thought it was always people of color that I fit in with. It was always the neurodivergent folks. Yeah. No matter what yeah. race, it always had to be yeah. a fucking autistic or ADHD. Yeah. Makes sense. Uh, there's nothing like, I haven't said this in a while. Hmm. That's an interesting feeling, a good feeling. There's nothing like autistic love. So pure, so good. Uh, my father has it, brother has it, you have it, Sleem has it, Colin has it. Nothing like it. The connection, the bond. Yeah, so good to say that. Uh, so, and it's the same thing for some of our people, uh, black and brown. And we really love our people, but sometimes we've got to watch out because some folks are a little dangerous, you know. Uh, especially yeah. when they just shitting on other populations. Like, chill, bro, man. Let them people do their thing. Yeah. There's one thing that came out. I, I don't know if you've seen him. There's a guy who came out um, and he's talking about how he wants to help, like, save libraries and stuff like that. Um, and now he's taking, like, a, a break from all of it. For like mental health issues and stuff and most mo majority of people are saying because like people are like bullying him yeah. pretty much and stuff like that um i believe it and it's just 
It's just terrible because it's just like this guy's actually coming out and trying to help save libraries, doing a really good thing, something yep. that we all should be going to. We all should be going to libraries, reading books and things like that. And then it's like you go on the Internet and you're just Troll. terrible, terrible people. Troll. It's very it's it's very sickening, um, especially just we want to talk about education and things like that like oh wow all these people are acting weird and stuff like that yeah because we're not educating ourselves enough yeah. we're not doing it and it's like this guy's coming out and saying like go to a library read a book and we just belittle him like he's nothing so we, i just want to say to all those people if you watch this and you talk shit about him like you ain't shit go fuck you're really yourself. not really go fuck yourself yeah because you got yeah. people that shit on logic He's this and that. Yeah. His music, he's this and that. Oh, no, he's only just advocating for, like, all mental health and black mental health. Dude's just corny. Well, okay, you know. Talks about peace, love, positivity. That's corny. Yeah, he's terrible. All right. Yeah, no, he's not cool. black enough. I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. Not black enough, but if he was saying, like, he wasn't black, and he was just saying he was a white rapper rapping and stuff, yep. then they'd be like, oh, well, why aren't you talking about your black side enough? Then, There's no winning. There's, there's no, no winning. winning. Uh, so this interracial stuff, uh, intersections of race, it's just so complicated yeah. as we, uh, I'm going to pivot us to the, technically the, the scene that was before it, but the next one was when he's in the school Yeah, and yep. you know, I technically already talked about how kids are dropping out this and that, right. And this white teacher tells him, you know, people love you. Mm -hmm. Baby, you're such a good talker. You're so well-spoken. You're, you're a good, great personality. People love you, but, you know, do something with your hands. Yeah. You know, be a carpenter. Jesus was a carpenter. And I have heard that sweet kiss mm -hmm. of racism or even hating me for, like, who I am as my size and my gender all mixed in because it all mixes in. ADHD and all, all the intersections makes in uh, mm -hmm. and that 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 kiss that they give you while they push you out and you and you know what it is and some folks will always say the same thing you know it comes down to it comes down to this it comes down to experience this and that but all of you know i'm vastly superior in almost every single category to get the job done but mm -hmm. since you don't have like a few of these titles few of these little time stamps, then you're disqualified. Um, mm -hmm. And it's because many of us that talk, that speak the truth, that are a little combative at times, you know, you, you can't be controlled. And so a lot of us black and brown individuals go and open our own businesses. You know, right? You get, you know, the number, guess who the number one fucking starters of first-time businesses in America? You probably won't guess. Or you, Ooh. it's, it's going to be immigrants, brown folks, mm. and black folks. It's immigrants. Mm. So they're talking about they're taking our jobs. The motherfuckers are, are making America America. Mm. Doesn't even matter. America was all native, anyways. Uh, we're all fucking immigrants, but it's the black and brown immigrants that are like setting the standards of opening up things. And maybe we could go get a job somewhere else. But the thing is, the fuckers don't let us in. Yeah. My father was talking about, you know, a lot of pol political stuff all the time. Uh, my father grew up conservative, uh, Catholic family, uh, Republican family. Uh, grandpa always voted Republican, uh, for, uh, immigrated from Lebanon. That's just the way that their uh, economic values aligned and businesses aligned. And uh, pops ebbs and flows into different things, uh, progressive, conservative. And so I get a lot of news all the time. And so we were talking about, you know, immigration. And how it's like expanding and going like bazooka nuts. And, but it's like, if you wanted to shut down the borders, you could have done that a long time ago, but no president ever does it because they don't want to do it because we depend on those immigrants, yeah. illegals, aliens, black and brown bodies to do all this work in America. Yeah. And so we shit on them and yet we still allow them all in because we depend on them. And so my dad said, maybe in like 30 years, it'll be different. And I was like, Nah, bro, because we're not getting educated. We're not reading mm. in Malcolm X's autobiography. It literally says aardvark in there, and he reads aardvark. Yeah. 
education is power. Uh, your bachelor's degree does mean something. You reading outside in a, in a class is also mean something. You reading comic books re- means something. You expanding your mind and getting better every day means something because knowledge is power. And so we had the conversation, it was a, a day or two ago, it was like, will things be better in 30, 40 years? I said, maybe not to 100 years. Ain't no Negroes like me getting no job soon in these white spaces. I said, look at all these big universities, Dad. Look at them all. I said, it's, it's 90, well, that's exaggerated, 70% women that are on all these counseling centers, mostly white, 70% women, maybe more. But it's all white men that lead them. That are the directors, mm-hmm. assistant directors. I said, how's that math add up? Mm-hmm. You tell me how that math adds up. You tell me, oh, okay. That's interesting. And so I don't even really like applying to some of the jobs because of me being a male. And I'm like, there should be some women in there, but at least I'm a brown dude. Super fucking educated yeah. dude. Equitable dude. Stand up for everyone, dude. Um, they don't take no shit, dude. Uh, but my folks are very intimidated by me. It is what it is. I told my father, I said, the cool thing is we were talking about race and gender. And I said, I love queer folk, man. He said, why? I said, they've been the kindest people to me almost at all times. A wonderful population of people. He said, not this one. I said, yeah, there were some racial issues in this one that kept me out of a job. It wasn't, wasn't the queerness. Uh, wasn't their their status? It, it was racism. It was me being ADHD, autistic, and brown. It was me talking to everyone else, and my tongue got me in trouble because it wasn't white. Uh, I'll never quit. Uh, I'll continue to work. My clients love me. Spence knows this, but I, I don't. I'm not trying to brag myself now. I'm trying to all of you. Continue to push forward. People will shit on you. The world will shit on you. Continue to push forward. Continue to be you. If you have to make a few refinements to get through a break through a door or a wall, then do that, but never fully sell out. Unless economically you need the money because you have to take care of people in your family, that's a little bit different. But if you're just privileged enough, don't sell out completely. Don't, not fully, not totally. I was never supposed to be in higher ed, Spencer. It's, it's been an interesting few weeks. All my students, I tell them a story about I was never supposed to be in higher ed. I was supposed to be in the high schools, but then I got kicked out of that on some bullshit too. Uh, and every student I've told this story to, they've cried. I said, why are you crying? And they just said, I'm so happy for you that you're going to move on to the next thing and work with your population and go teach. <laughs> They just sound just so fucking happy. And they just said, I hope I can be happy like you and make the choices that you made. Hopefully I can live my truth like you do. I say, kid, you got for all of them. You got so much love. You, you're going to be fine. You're going to be happier than me. You just got to keep your head up. Just out. That way no one stands on your back or puts their fucking foot on your neck. You just keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Every kid has cried. It's interesting. People listen to my story sometimes and they'll tank in happiness or sadness. That's why I don't like talking too much about my stories. It's too heavy. Uh, it's too heavy. So I bring up that scene all the time about that kid being in there because he says, you're the N-word, man. You ain't going to be shit. You can't be no lawyer. I just find it interesting that um, the teacher compares him to Jesus. And feels like a little bit of like foreshadowing in a way, um, because he, Jesus, speaks for the you know the poor people, the people that are seen as dirt, and then gets crucified in front of his people. Interesting, Interesting. very interesting. I wonder if Spike Lee kind of knew that once he was. I bet he did. He was just like, I got him. I wonder if they'll catch on to this shit. One of my favorite scenes is uh, he's in the prison. I'm going to use it as a reel. He mm-hmm. said he goes up to the priest, the Catholic priest in there. That was one of my favorite scenes is when the priest, he's like, he's in the, the box, the hole. Mm-hmm. And he said, you want me to pray? 
God ain't never did nothing for me. Mm. Nothing. I got nothing. He took my father. It's horrible. Like, it literally gives yeah. you goosebumps and makes you, like, want to vomit. Right. And he's just so, get out of here. So then later he gets educated, right? And he said, hey, man, so Jesus was blonde hair, blue eyed, huh? But mm. that motherfucker was, but he was brown skinned. And he had hair like wool. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so he couldn't have been white because he was black. That's a wonderful can't scene have, in the in the prison. Can't have black leaders, no matter what time. <laughs> yep. So it's a wonderful story. Uh, yeah. yeah so Great story. We see. I think the next scene is the Mecca scene. Is that is that what it is? The Mecca one? Uh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh so I selected this one because it's funny. I, I see I see I see Colin, blonde haired blue eye. And he said, I eat with the, all these Arabs. And you won't believe it. I'm eating and drinking from the same cup. And you see Denzel, like look at the cup. Yeah. He just got done calling them all white devils not too long yeah. ago. Mm-hmm. And then you know, and, and separation. He was a separationist, kind of like fucking Star Wars. Yeah, uh, <laughs> get him out of here. Get him. Get him out of here. Right? He said we need to be separate. We don't. We don't even want you in our congregation. We don't need your help. Yeah. He told that one white girl. He said, "How can we help you?" He said, "Don't never talk to us." <laughs> yeah, poor white girl. <laughs> yeah, she became part of the clan that day. <laughs> <laughs> Got her, got her own hood. Yep, got her own. Hood. She was custom made, Rebecca. <laughs> it was like in f- it was slightly. <laughs> it was like football. Remember the Titans where you fucking st- <laughs> the white stuff. Oh my god! <laughs> she just has the word "don't" on there. It's just like, yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember you, boy. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Got bad there. Okay, Tiffany. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, um, I think this is a great scene too about also traveling and seeing different types of people. And then, you know, because that's one of the killers of any type of uh, Speak any type it. of racial profiling or anything like that is isolation. I think is isolating yourself with your only one set of people that you've ever been with. You know, I think once you actually get outside your box and you know, make sure that you can talk to people who have different point of views, who look different than you, or who have the same point of views and, you know, look different still. Yep. Just like we saw in the scene. Yep. Um, great things. Great things. You got to travel. You got to learn. Yes. You got to go to yes. other countries. If you're privileged enough, you got a little bit of money, right? You're just a road trip. Um, yeah. You got to talk to other people outside your bubble. But since we are such a individual individualistic society, but very much only within our own communities. Mm-hmm. When you go to your school, girls sitting with the girls, boys sitting with the boys. You got mm-hmm. the punky, weird kids sitting over here. You got the eccentric kid, the hippie kids over here. The blacks and yeah. the whites always segregate. It's all at Mexican segregated. There's a little intermingling, yeah. but yeah. we tend to congregate with our own. Guess yeah. what's the number one segregated day of the week? What Monday, Sunday? Oh, church. Cool. Uh, okay. We go to our own race and we celebrate. Mm-hmm. Even though religion has vastly dropped in the years, the most segregated days of the week is Sundays when people go to church or mass, whatever it is, the mosque. Mm-hmm. Uh, and technically, not technically, statistically, we are more segregated now than we were back in the fucking sixties. Because of economics and hardship, we're still extremely segregated. Wow. My father was telling me about uh, there's this school where these kids are just acting up, and it's like 70% of the teachers don't even show up because it's just too hard, it's too tough, tons of crime mm-hmm. and all that. I'm like, yeah, the kids got nothing. Wow. The kids got nothing, so of course they're going to act up. Um, yeah. Fuck, that's, that's what my school was. It was the pipeline to prison. Uh Shout out to J.W. Sexton, wonderful school and teachers there, man, working their asses off. Kids treated them like straight up garbage, man. I I did too. I was a piece of shit. Um, mm-hmm. But I had some wonderful, wonderful 
uh, teachers, man. Uh, they had my back. Scared the shit out of me, some of them. Old white lady chemistry. I don't remember her name. She scared the shit out of me, though. Uh, I did good in the class. Shout out to you, scary ass white lady. Yep. <laughs> Shout out to uh, teacher, I forgot his first name, Barrera. Mr. Barrera. My dad was about to beat his ass for giving me a B. Straight up. <laughs> like, he went Jeez. up in there. He's like, you don't get this motherfucker an A or extra credit to get an A, I'm going to kill you. I got you better it. look me up in the newspaper. I don't I'm, know if Google was I'm around at that time. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's intense. Um, so he goes to Mecca and he sees all these people and he just opens up his mind. He reports back to his wife, like, bro, we got it all wrong. We fucked it up. Mm-hmm. What did we do? Yeah. All these people. And hopefully I can keep some of the praying in there too. He's walking and praying. And I know we're not a super religious pod. Uh, I, I, this is not about, I don't endorse any religion. I myself, uh, spiritual, don't practice any uh, organized religion uh, because I believe a lot of white people, I believe that men have polluted it. I believe that a lot of it's very cultish. A lot of it's a hustle. And too many people to me have died in the name of God. Mm. There's too much murder and genocide in the name of God. And so I cannot, I cannot align myself with that. Um, besides the point, and he sees all these people praying, man, and they just love. I'm sure there's still racism there, right? But still, like, there's always racism, and I know it's with Arabs, uh, Indian folk, right? It's just it's a, darker is always worse. I know that. I'm not fucking stupid. Mexican folk, darker is always worse. But still, though, you see all these people with each other, and you're like, holy shit. So he talked about the spiritual awakening and not necessarily religious spiritual awakening, but the younger folk maybe being like, hey, man, this this racism shit's fucked up. Mm-hmm. Why am I supposed to hate him? So I'm supposed to hate Bobby and Jamal and, 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 and Jacoby. Let's use those generic black names, uh, mixed names. But then we got, you know, I'm supposed to hate Margarita and fucking... Roberto, for what? Hey. I mean, at Margarita. Least I Margarita. <laughs> at least I didn't go fucking Juan. No, Juan. Juan. Hey, I'm supposed to hate Patel. Why? You know, why? why, why, why? Yeah. I don't have to co sign. You don't have to go with that shit anymore. And so I think you can look at your brothers. And your sisters, I know I'm genderizing it, but, uh, you know, I always tell, I tell everyone, what's up, brother? How you doing, brother? I was at the mm-hmm. meat market today. Thank you, brother. Um, cause it just feels connected when I say those things. And I think some people look at me like, Hey man, ain't your brother. Or, hey, you ain't black. You can't be saying that. I'm like, no, nah, man, I like saying brother. It makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. Makes me feel connected. Uh, yeah. so hopefully we can keep those scenes in. Uh, yeah. I was wondering about folks might be uncomfortable with like the prayer, but I think it's cool to have the authenticity of that Arabic prayer in there. Mm-hmm. Um, see what happens. Yeah. And I think also with like that religion, it's more like everyone's kind of on the same level. There's not any tears or anything like that. You know, you probably still have like, like the, your own type of like um, preachers and stuff like that in the religion itself almost, yeah. but like as you saw in the clip it's just they're all laying on the same floor together they're all drinking from the same cup they're all eating from the same place they're all you know in the same line for prayer and things like that so um i think that also has a lot to do with it is that we just try to see who can one up another um while you know sometimes religion gets you to the base or the root of everything and it's just being on the same level with a person next to you and just trying to go to the same goal which is heaven yeah heaven uh or you know whatever that religious affiliation is whatever yeah yeah, Yeah. i know what you're getting it's 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 all we are all here at this level and this entity is at this level and we know that we are all in the same fight, our existence together, um, and yeah. the humanity of it, which leads into the next scene. Yeah, it's, it's, 
And the dissociation scene, that's just it. And it's just a really good dissociation of him like being completely fucking freaked out. If if I can keep it mm-hmm. in there, I'll keep it in there. Not a lot of explaining yeah. in that. Motherfuckers knowing he's walking into his ass, his death. Yeah. Yeah. Most people that you know know they're about to die, they know. Yeah. Especially the that big. I mean, Tupac said it multiple times. Yeah. Um, you know, Martin Luther King, he knew. He knew. He knew. He knew. You know, Malcolm, he knew. He so knew. it's like it's just like because you get to a certain point where it's like it feels like everyone is coming after you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, and then of course you already have like, you know, the white people in that society just already just hate him because now he's trying to unify everybody. Yeah. And it's just like, ah, oh, no. Like yeah. before it was probably fine because they're like, oh, yeah, he's trying to separate people. Yes. We love this. Segregationist. To... Yes. We love this. And then all of a sudden he came back and then he wants to bring everyone together. And they're like, well, this is a problem. Let's take care of this. Hey, now, hey, a second ago, you're talking about violence and you're some ignorant fucking dude. And right, yeah. and people don't believe in you. Now you're all talking about like, holy shit, I wish no violence upon any of my black yeah. brothers and white sisters. Yeah. And, and white. And it's just like, his evolution yeah. is the true story of humanity mm. to be this wonderful, innocent thing beaten by racism, by loss, by trauma, loses his mother, St. Asylum in Lansing, Michigan, uh, his father, right, murdered, and then to be in school, this and that, and then to get into all this drugs and, and, and underworld and gambling and pimping, and then to go to prison, then to get educated, and then you get educated and you see all this stuff, and but it turns out it was the wrong path because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I ain't going to say too much because I ain't trying to die, um, but, you know, obviously there's, you can read into that. Not the best person. Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to say too much on that, but obviously weird stuff there. Um, and he went on a different path. Uh, and he does the traveling and it's just a come up and of like how you can evolve. It's never too late to evolve in the way you view humans, your political race, gender, Right, genocide. I'll say that word one more time. Genocide. The things that are going on these days. The murdering of innocent children. Interesting. 20,000 dead. But everyone's like, oh, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. Ah, it's fine. Mo- so, moving on. Yeah, moving on. Yeah, yeah move on. Um, it's just a wonderful story of someone who... Fucks up, gets fucked over at almost every cause, and then like makes something of himself. The sad thing is, is he dies because he figured it out. That's when you know you're doing something good. You die. Great. <laughs> as soon as our podcast gets good, gets good, Spence, you know we're <laughs> dead. <laughs> <laughs> So much I want to say. All right. Susie is good. Heart attack. <laughs> he died of a donut overdose. Yep. How yeah. did that happen? Well, fucking dry ass powder donut, bro. Got him. Hey, I, I ordered every Krispy Kreme I could. <laughs> yep. Oh, they're going to get us. How dare we unify all humanity on this podcast? <laughs> they're like, with humor. Yes. Yes. Um, ah, you don't have a woman's point of view. I do. I used to be one. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Um, and so you get into the last scene where they're just like thanking him as a person, as a man, uh, as this Afro American. And it's just complete respect and homage. I'm not going to therapize that. It is what it is. You'll see it. I'll do my yeah. best to keep that in. If not, I will timestamp it in the movie for you. Great. Nelson Mandela. But that shit there we need to talk about. Yeah. Nelson Mandela fucking laid it down. And I want to say this for anyone that watches the pod or watches any of our uh, stuff and they're like, ill. Um, because you never know what people think. Uh, humanity. Yeah. Our human rights to be treated as a human being, loved, respected as a human being. He keeps saying human being as a human, right? He's not talking about any. 
identity based thing. I'm talking about the essence of just being alive and deserving everything for just being alive. Now, I can't get into all the political stuff. I don't know all the shit about Nelson Mandela. I don't know all the shit about what he stands for, what he doesn't stand for. And all the different. He was a badass motherfucking man. Oh, I know that, but I'm just saying. I'm. Yeah, I got you. People say a lot of shit. Or like right now, there's this stuff that's happening with the embryos in Georgia and all that, but then they just took away all the food and shit for all the kids in school. So like, do you care about people? Or do you not care about people? Yeah, right. Because you're you going to keep this motherfucking embryo alive, you know, or some shit bullshit. I don't know. I didn't read it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you're not going to give the kids lunches. We and Spencer's talked about on the podcast on how big a deal these school lunches are. Yeah. What the fuck? It's, it's two to three of the meals for a day for a kid. Uh, yeah. And so I, I, that's why I said this is, do we actually value human life? No. Thank you. Correct answer. No, we don't. We care about. We care about money. Die. We care about. Status. We care about, yeah, just what we look like, all that bullshit. Lobbyists. We care about. Yeah. Right stocks. We care about capitalism. That's what we care about. But do we actually care about humans? You know, yeah. hey, I'm not saying I care about every single fucking human all the time, all day, every day. I'm not the type of person, right? Yeah. I protect me and mine's. But uh, I'm not saying either. I don't like money. I do. I like getting shit. Yeah. I like buying things. Look at this. I got a dark saber. I bought that. I, b- I bought it. I bought it. You know what I'm saying? We're not above that stuff, but you know, I'm at just the trying same to time, shed light. It's not everything. Yes. It's not everything. Nope. And Mandela's trying to make the point at the very end there is, well, maybe he isn't, but to me he is, what are we doing? Why, 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 why so much hatred and vitriol towards everyone? What the fuck do you care what this person calls himself? What the fuck do you care if this kid in Texas has his shit in braids and he going to kick him out of graduation, what do you care if homeboy selling a cigarette on the street? What do you care if this person tries to come into the country to have a better life? Now, I don't want to get fully into the immigration, but like, I get some of y'all care and I get there's reasons to care, but also let's think about like human life. Hey, shit, if I was them, I'd be doing the same shit. Let's be real. If you was in these countries and you were running for your life, trying to make money, you do the same shit. You do the same shit. Like all of you know that you do the same shit. I do it the right way. The right way takes you seven years. You, you'll probably never get it and you'll never have the money for it. So you'll die. Mm-hmm. So what does it mean to be a human being? What does it mean to love and to respect other human beings? I think many of us don't know what that is. I'm in with this. It's pretty stupid. Okay. I was walking back from work to my car at the end of the day, and it's nice out, and fraternities are everywhere, and there's all these white kids outside playing beer pong and shit. and oh. they're, they're all playing trap music. <laughs> Not a brother in sight. Yeah, no. Not a brother in sight. And you playing track music, Trade a Truth out of Houston. I'm like, you, how do you even know what this is? Um, no damn well you don't fuck with no black or brown people. No damn well you gonna treat them like shit. No damn well you say horrific shit. No damn well you would probably be the one with your knee on their neck. Yeah. But you playing the trap music. Everyone wants to be brother. Don't no one want to be a brother. It's interesting. Everybody wanna. Everybody wants the glory, but don't want to go through the dirt. Appropriation is a son of a bitch, isn't it? It is. It really is. It really is. Yeah, I was playing video games the other day, man, and then this dude was like, hey, man, you sound like a black person, but you also sound like a white person. And I said, what's a black person and a white person sound like? Sure. What do they look like to you? Mm-hmm. Remember I was talking to a student about uh, being gay or not, them, and I said, well, what's your, what do you think a, a gay person look like? Just a real feminine, skinny white kid? I said, well, you you ain't that feminine and you ain't that skinny, brother. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey. 
Hey, you dark as hell too. So shit. <laughs> 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 Stay out the sun, motherfucker. <laughs> Let's say some video games are motherfucker. motherfucker. I was playing, I was playing, dude, Madden, right? Playing with my Vikings. Had to. Of course. Play with my Vikings. Got you. You know, you know. And this is when AP was on the team. All right. Um, now I I don't agree with everything that AP does in his personal yeah. life. Yep. But that dude was a dog on the field. Dog. Let me tell you something. That dude was just and then I was beating him. All of a sudden, he just started yelling the N-word through the microphone. Just out of nowhere. Wasn't talking shit at all. Just playing the game. Let me tell you something. I I I swear to God, AP had like 300 yards on him. <laughs> <laughs> I made sure to juke, truck him, everything. AP was dogging him that whole game. <laughs> it's how a black man runs the ball. Hey. Let me tell you something. Reparations. Racism ended that day. Yeah, it ended at reparations that day. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it's a thing, man. So people, people are interesting. So racism is here to stay. Yeah. Uh, sadly. It ain't going anywhere. No, it ain't going nowhere. It ain't going nowhere. Classism here to stay. Uh, I'm glad that I got a chance to rewatch this. I wanted to pay it respect, so I had to rewatch it to make sure that me and Spence were on our shit today. Uh, much respect and love to everyone that listens to this pod. Uh, we are not the connoisseurs. We are not the savants in all of these aspects. I just know a little bit about a little bit. Uh, I did my best to do this justice. This is one of my heroes as a person. Uh, mm. And in therapy, I always say by any means necessary, we're going to get this shit done. Mm. Uh, they say it's a generalist practice for as a therapist by any means necessary. We're going to try and get you to where you need to go. Uh, and if that sometimes me teaching my clients or students to how to cheat a little bit, to how to figure out things outside the box on how to work the system on how to get all your dominoes in the line, well, I'm going to teach them how to do it because the system is, is trying every day to fuck us over. So I'm going to teach my people how to work the system, just like my father taught me. So, uh, again, love all of you, uh, man, do your best to respect everyone. Uh, even the people that treat you like shit or may say certain things, treat them with respect. I ain't say you got to love them. Treat them with respect, hold them accountable. But don't let no one call you out your name unless you're unsafe. Uh, then you can get out of there. But don't let no one call you out your name. Yeah. Uh, take care of yourselves, everyone. Uh, Spencer's going to do the outro again. I just want to make sure that everyone take care of yourselves. Whatever that is. Uh, it's a longer pod, so those of you that stuck with us, uh, much appreciation, much love. All right. With that, uh, not only watch this movie, but also do your research on Malcolm X. Because I already know some of y'all are going to be talking some wild shit in them comments. I already know. I feel it. Um, so, yeah, go check out um, this great film, as well as do your research on Malcolm X. And uh, all and every black and brown person that has achieved greatness um, and those who, you know, don't get the, don't get the accolades that they should. Yeah. Also do that. Yeah. Yes. Cause there are a lot of them out there. Yep. Um, so yeah. Uh, with that, go check out. Oh no rollers. They're fantastic. Yep. Plug, but whatever you get 10% off your order. They're great fidget toy. I've been fidgeting with this the whole time, See. even though my hand was down here. So I was fidgeting. Um, so go check it out um, in the link below. Uh, with that, I'm Spencer. That's not a different Spectre podcast. All right, everyone. Remember, take care of yourselves. Or don't. That's up to you. Peace.